Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to convert a 32-bit floating point number uh, represented as IEEE 754 format to its equivalent decimal value. We do that by checking these two examples. We start with example number one. And in this example, we're going to answer this question which says what decimal value is represented by the following 32-bit floating point number stored in RAM. Now see, these are, this is the RAM. And we have the, just a chunk of memory uh, as four bytes and they are full of uh, binary digits. And as you can see, we have four bytes. So it says these four bytes represent floating number. It has the type of float. That means if it's a float, it has special format, which is IEEE 754 format. If it's integer, integer it's going to be different format. So that's why we, we must know what format or what the, what's the type of this variable, of this place, of these four bytes. If it's a float, gonna be, we will translate it or convert it to decimal differently. If it's integer, we're going to convert it or translate it to decimal in different way than floating. Okay, we will we will see that by the end of this video. Let's start for with first step. In this step, as you see now, we converted this one into hexadecimal. Now, first step is we have to determine the three parts of our I E754 for match. Okay, now you can see with the three format are the sign, the exponent, and the mantissa. We already know that the sign is 1 bit, exponent is 8 bit, and mantissa is 23 bit. We look at here now, this one is the most significant bit, this 0 is the least significant bit. Now we look at the most significant bit stored here in our RAM. This most significant bit represents the sign. And then we will count 8 bits, which are 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. These 8 bits represent the exponent. Now the rest of them, which are in black, are the mantissa. Okay, now this is the first part. Now the second part is we must get the n value, which is the real exponent. n equal exponent minus 127. Now the exponent is in binary form, as you see, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. We have to subtract 127 from it. First, we have to convert it to decimal form. This in this binary form in decimal equals 119. We will subtract 127 from 119. The result is minus 8. This minus 8 is very important, this result. It tells us the shifting amount we must do right to the right because it's negative, as, as we shall see in step 3. In step 3, it says write the, the scientific notation. Let's not forget the implied one. We will see that and then convert it to original notation. Now, from scientific notation, we will convert to original notation by moving the point of the mantissa either left or right according to the value of n. Now, as you see, now this is our mantissa. It's here, okay? And now we put the implied one, which is we put the point n1, and we multiply by 2 to the power minus 8. Now, where did we get this minus 8? We get it as from the result of subtracting 127 from the decimal value of our exponent, as you see. Okay, now, we this is scientific notation. We will convert it to original notation. Now, since this is minus 8, since this is minus value, we will shift this point to the right. How many places? 80 places. As you can see, at the point we're here, it was here, this point was here, and then now uh, we move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As you, as you see, you know, we put the point here, and this is the leading zero. Now, this notation is the original notation, okay? Now, the rest of it, the rest of the parts are easy. In step 4, we will convert this one directly to its decimal value, straightforward way. But let's not forget the sign. Now, the sign in this case is negative. Why is negative? Because the sign was 1, as you see. Okay, now we will convert this one to uh, a decimal by using the normal formula of converting from binary to decimal. As you see, since this is the point, 
we start with this one. This is 0 times 2 to the power minus 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power minus 2 plus 2 to the power minus 3 plus 0 times 2 to the power minus 4 plus 0 times 2 to the power minus 4 plus etc. As you can see, it's completely written here. Notice here, this is the first one. This is times 2 to the power minus 8. Now you can see the pattern here, and I already marked and painted uh, the in red colors that that uh, that the, the one that had coefficient one, as you see. So now we put all these uh, the red because the zero is going to be all of them equal zeros. So now uh, two to the power minus eight plus two to the power minus ten plus two to the power minus fourteen plus. 2 to the power minus 15, etc. As you see, now the final result, if we use the calculator, going to be like this, and this is the, the going to be a negative, negative this number. Now, finally, so when we make the C out in C plus C plus, or when we when we make a print in Python, or we make a system that out that print uh, in Java, that this number will be displayed as negative. So this is this the number will be displayed on the screen if this number this binary form match stored in this ram in this ram and of course after rounding it's going to be 0 0.005 this is this rounding does not it's not done in hardware so uh, uh, now th so that's this is the final thing as you see the steps are easy it's completely the reverse order of converting from decimal to a floating point number as we saw in the previous videos. I hope it's clear. Now we move to example two. So so to to make sure that everything is clear. Again it, it gives us another number and it says this is a chunk of memory. And it says this four bytes represent float variable. Now these are a float. That means we have to look differently. That's we have that means we have to look in terms of I triple E seven fifty four format. Okay, now it says here if this were in this memory and we will print this one on the screen, what number will be displayed on the screen? Again, a straightforward process, the same steps we saw in example one. In step one, we will express the sign, the exponent, and the mantis. And you see now the sign here is one. And the exponent, we have to count from this one eight bits. You're going to be one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, which is this exponent and the rest which is in the black are the mantissa straightforward one next step we will find n value the real exponent the n equals e which is exponent minus 127 first we have to convert this one to its um, decimal value straightforward from binary to decimal and then we subtract 127 from it as you see the result is positive 5 in this case it's positive not 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 negative as in example one so that means in, in step three we have to move left how many places five places we will see that okay in step three let's not let's, let's not forget the implied one as you see this is our mantissa we put it exactly right here and then we put the point one this is our leading one or the implied one and this is scientific notation times two to the power five where did we get this five from this one which is the result of 127 subtract from the decimal value of our exponent okay now we will convert this one from the scientific notation to original notation by moving the point left or right it's gonna be left why it's left because this is positive 5 as you see now this is the point here we have to move now left to move 1 2 3 4 five places so as you see the point become right here as you see in, I, I put it in the green so now it become 2 to the power 0 now I will take this number and this one will convert it directly to its binary form let's not forget the sign bit in this case again it's again it's negative because the s equal 1 if it's 0 going to be positive see we will convert this one to decimal straightforward converting from binary to decimal as you see now we start with this point in this point here we start with this one that means this is 1 times 2 to the power 0 okay this one as you see this one 
and then this one one times two to the power one one ta zero times two to the power two uh, zero times two to the power three zero times two to the power four and finally one times two to the power five in in here we're gonna put for this zero times two to the power minus one one times two to the power minus two etc until we finished all these binary digits and if we use calculator for this one, as you can see, this is the number that will be shown in the screen. It's going to be shown in negative because I already told you it's negative. So when we make print or see out in C++, as you see, this number will be displayed on the screen. Now, after rounding, you know, it's going to be this number. Okay, now I hope these two examples are clear now. Let's check this one out because this one, this topic is very important. It says it asks us why. Now, after we do that, now we have to know why we must declare the variable before working on it in coding and programming languages. In other words, let's see in here, let's, this is code of C++. Can we go just directly and say C out X? It will give, the compiler will give us error. Why it's, it's going to be, it, it will see here that X is undefined we have to determine what is x. We have to determine its um, its format. We cannot just see x equal to. It's gonna be give us uh, another error message. We have to determine the type of the variable. Because why we do that? Because we can read it differently. Let's assume that x. Assume. Let's assume that this x is stored in RAM in this format. We can read it in different way. In fact, four ways. First way, we can read it since it's four byte. We can read it as float. We can read it as integer. And the integer has two types, could be signed, could be unsigned. And four, we can read it as string, you know, array of character. So we have more than one option. That's why we must determine the, the type of the variable. Otherwise, the compiler will give us error. Okay, now, Let's assume if it's a float, if we already put here a float, what number will be on the screen? It's going to display this one. If it's signed integer, that means we, 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 we book one, uh, we reserve this most significant bit for, uh, uh, this is not for the whole number, and this is, we're going to see that in different videos, how to conduct about the integer, signed and unsigned, etc. If it's signed integer, this will be displayed on the screen. If it's unsigned integer, this number will be displayed on the screen. Now, notice there, these are equivalent to these to this binary digits. So, as you can see, that's why we must know what are the, what is the type of our variable that points here. If it's a float, it, we're going to interpret it differently. We're going to display this one on the screen. If it's signed integer, we're going to interpret it differently. We're going to display this one on the screen. If it's unsigned integer, it's going to be... If it's string, it's going to... Which is array of character, going to look different on the array. That's why we must, before working in any variable, we must determine its type. Okay. As you see now, if x was float, as you in this one, so th this is, that means this is stored in, in RAM, and that's how we make the C out. This one is storing in RAM, and C out is reading from RAM and display on the screen. If it's integer, which is in this case, signed integer, which is by default signed, this number will be stored in this in this form, the same, this one is, this will be stored equivalent to this one. So when we make C out, we read it in dif uh, differently as shown. If we make it unsigned integer x, this number will be stored in this one. And so when we make the C out, the same C out, this number will be displayed. So uh, the final, uh, 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 if we wrap this topic, that that's why it's important for us um, and for the compiler Otherwise, he, 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 uh, otherwise, the compiler cannot tell what number is this, what number will be, must be displayed on the screen. So, w it determines what number will be displayed on, on the screen, depend 
totally on the type of the variable if it's a float if it's signed integer if it's unsigned in integer etc i hope this this is clear for you i hope now it's clear why the compiler give us or and why it must give us error in fact when we not determine the the type of a variable thank you very much for 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 listening and i'll see you next time